from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, April the 17th, 2018. Israel this evening commemorates the memory of its 23,645 fallen IDF soldiers, members of the security forces, and 3,134 victims of terror. A one-minute siren sounded this evening, marking the beginning of Yom Hazikaron, which will continue through tomorrow evening. Ceremonies tonight included a candle-lighting national ceremony at the Western Wall in Jerusalem, as well as an event at the Knesset. Tomorrow morning, a second siren will sound for two minutes, after which the official state ceremony begins at Mount Herzl, as well as other military cemeteries across the country. Events continue until tomorrow night when a torch-lighting ceremony proclaims the end of Yom HaZikaron and the beginning of Yom HaAtzma'ut, Israel's this year 70th Independence Day. IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Gadi Eisenkot addressed IDF soldiers today, saying that together, amid the pain and longing, we've proudly stood for 70 years and shouldered the burden of providing security to all of Israel's citizens and residents. At a commemoration ceremony for Israel's fallen soldiers this morning, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu mourned Israel's fallen, which include his own brother, Yoni Netanyahu, who was killed during the Entebbe rescue of 1976. The Prime Minister said the message left by the fallen is sharp and clear. Our lives may be too short, but we have guaranteed the life of the nation forever. Netanyahu said, and they have indeed given us the ability to live. It is thanks to them and their successors that we are here. The prime minister also paid tribute to the two soldiers who fell in Operation Protective Edge in 2014 and whose remains are being held by terror group Hamas in Gaza. Netanyahu said, we don't forget for a moment our missing soldiers, Hadar Golden and Aron Shaul, and we are committed to returning the boys home and also Avira Mengustu, referring there to the Israeli civilian also being held by Hamas. Netanyahu said Israel would continue to wield its defensive sword for the foreseeable future while also fostering relationships with moderate parties around us to pave the way to peace. Well, in what appears to be the latest effort of the BDS campaign, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions movement that seeks to delegitimize the state of Israel, the city council in Durham, North Carolina, voted unanimously to bar the city's police department from international exchange programs with any country, but making only specific mention of Israel. The bill began from an anti-Israel petition of the Jewish Voice for Peace, a group that supports BDS. The petition accuses the IDF and Israel police of violence against minorities in Israel and of using tactics of extrajudicial killing and racial profiling. And the bill suggests that training by Israel leads American police to act in ways that are unwanted here in the U.S. The Anti-Defamation League, who helps organize counterterrorism and police training for U.S. law enforcement in Israel, expressed their deep disappointment at the council's vote. ADL Washington, D.C. Regional Director Doron Ezekson released the following statement to JBS, citing the council's endorsement of what is clearly, he said, a biased statement against Israel. Ezekson said the charge that American police exchange programs play a role in political militarization and oppression is malicious and false. This effort, he said, was orchestrated by one of the most vocal anti-Israel groups in America, referring there to Jewish Voice for Peace, without any attempt to gain the facts from other mainstream organizations and law enforcement leaders themselves, who can attest to the value of these exchange programs, adding that singling out training programs in Israel as having a negative race-based effect on U.S. law enforcement's conduct and practices is neither justified nor accurate. The World Jewish Congress presented Israel's president a declaration today showing the support of diaspora Jewry for Israel in honor of tomorrow's milestone Independence Day. A declaration of the Jewish diaspora's commitment to the state of Israel on the occasion of the 70th anniversary was signed by the leaders of 83 Jewish communities around the globe. 
It expresses the immense pride and admiration for Israel's remarkable and inspiring achievements over the course of the past seven decades. And as a pledge of its steadfast and unwavering support for Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people and its centrality to the Jewish people. The declaration was hand delivered today to Israeli President Reuven Rivlin by a World Jewish Congress delegation led by CEO Robert Singer. Rivlin, upon receiving it, said that at the root of our relationship as the Jewish people, there is one simple, absolute understanding that must prevail our mutual responsibility for one another our commitment to the security, liberty, and welfare of every member of our people. This commitment, he said, must be stronger than any disagreement. Rivlin said he was pleased to accept the moving declaration, a simple proof of this mutual responsibility that we must never forego. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, April the 17th, with special programming for Yom HaZikaron tonight at 7 o'clock. It's a look at the solemn day of remembrance and the service of the IDF. At 7.30, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz presents a strong defense of the State of Israel from a UJA Federation of Greenwich event. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with the late veteran Israeli diplomat Abba Eban on L'Chaim. And at 10, Senior Vice President of the Shalem Center, Daniel Gordas, talks about why Israel's survival is critical to the future of Jews throughout the world. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, it's the Israeli debate program Frenemies. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, April the 17th, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.